Crystal Watson, and I want to welcome you to the Jackson Revival Center pre-service experience. In just a moment, we'll go live in our sanctuary where you'll experience praise, worship, and the Word of God from our pastor, Jennifer Beard. We want you to know that we've worked hard to create a full worship experience just for you. That said, we've made members of our prayer team available to you in the comments of this stream to tend to your personal and spiritual needs during the service. Also, we want to remind you that we have made several digital and online giving options available to you in addition to you giving online at jrc.church forward slash give. You may use our text to give services by texting JRCT for tithe or JRCO for offering to 28950. At the end of service, we'll extend an invitation to those of you who would like to dedicate or rededicate your life to Christ. After the invitation, you'll see me again and I'll let you know how you can tell us about your decision. Until then, thanks for watching and enjoy the service. Praise the Lord and good morning, everyone. We want you to know this morning that we serve a big God. He's strong, he's mighty, and there's no one like him. My God is big, he's strong and mighty, and his plan for you and I is victory, victory, victory. And there's nothing my God cannot do. Do you really believe it? There is nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. No, no, no. There's nothing my God cannot do. Now come on, let's celebrate this big God that we serve. There's nobody like him. God, we praise your name. We give you glory and honor. You're wonderful. You're a great God. Excellent in all your ways. Hallelujah. We pray.
you for the victory, Lord God. We thank you that you have already come and won, Lord God. We bless your name on this morning. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor, Lord God, and the praise, oh God. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord God. We offer this service up to you this morning, Lord God, and we ask that you move by your spirit, Lord God, that you have your way in this place, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the shepherd, Lord. We thank you for the blessing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God. As she brings a rhema word, Lord God, we praise you. We honor you. Now unto him who is able to do it exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us, God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey, everybody. This is Pastor Jennifer, and I am so excited to have another opportunity to share this moment with you. In just a few minutes, we're going to give you the opportunity to give. But as you're preparing to give, I want to share a little insight with you about the bumblebee. There's something about the bumblebee that I love to think upon from time to time, and that is this, that the bumblebee is not designed to fly. That according to science, according to physics, and according to the laws of aerodynamics, because the body of the bumblebee is disproportionate to the wing size of the bumblebee, according to everybody else, it is impossible for it to fly. The problem is somebody forgot to tell the bumblebee. And I love those that revelation and that insight because the bumblebee is a picture to us of things that happen every day. Every day, what is seemingly impossible becomes possible when God gets in it. Just like the bumblebee, it's seemingly impossible for it to fly. God can take a dark past and redeem it and use that life for his goodness and his glory, that God can take a broken marriage and redeem it and restore it when faith gets in it. See, the Bible lets us know without faith, it is impossible to please God. One of the ways that we respond in faith to the goodness and the grace of God is in the area of our generosity and our giving. When we sacrificially give, even in ways that don't make sense in the eyes of the world, even in ways that don't make sense to the mind that has not yet been renewed to the ways of God. When we listen to God's word and when we listen to God's voice more than the opinions of people, something supernatural begins to happen and we are acting in faith. I guess the, the bumblebee defies the laws of physics and generosity defies the laws of selfishness. The way to have more is to give more and the way to be more blessed is to act in generosity. So today I'm going to pray for you that as you give, you're going to see what seemingly impossible become possible when God gets in it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone who is coming today to give by faith because we understand without faith it's impossible to please you. But Father, as we give, we ask that you would do what is seemingly impossible, that you would multiply it. Father, we ask that not only would you multiply it, but that you would give back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, cause men to give unto our bosom. We thank you, Father, for unexpected blessings because of supernatural faith. Do your thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Won't you just lift your hand wherever you are and declare with me, whatever it is that the Lord has for me, I believe that it's going to be big. Come on, can you just declare over your own life that every blessing, every progression, every elevation that the Lord has in store for me is going to be big, y'all. It's going to be big. Come on, y'all know we're going to declare this together. Here we go. Come on, we just want to encourage you that despite everything that's going on, the promises of God are yes and amen. Everything he has for you is sure to come to pass. Let's declare this all. Say, I believe. Listen, y'all, that it's still my season. It's my season. 
Not only that, but I also believe this. Say, I believe. I believe that this is my time. And it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. Come on, I know this said breakthrough is in the room. Breakthrough is in the room. Come on, let's sing. Anticipate. Anticipating. I believe this with every fiber of my being. God's getting ready to move. Now, wherever you all lift your hands, for I know, for I know that God, God is, working is working a miracle just for me, y'all. And it's going to be. Woo! If you believe that, can you just declare that wherever you are? Hey, said it's going to be. Go to the top, y'all. Let's sing that. Say, I believe that it's my season. Come on, no matter what the problem may be, sing, I believe that no time better than right now is my time. Surrender for I know, for I know that God is worth a miracle. A miracle. Just for me, Just Lord. For me. It's gonna be big. Gonna be Everybody put big. your hands together. Everybody put your hands together. Come on, say it's gonna be big. Say. I believe your word, God. Said your promise is Lord. Come on, I love this part. Say. And you won't have proof. And it's gonna be God is gonna blow your heart. God is about to blow my heart. Come on, sing that with us. God's gonna He's gonna pour you out a blessing. right here in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, not only that, we're in one of the biggest pandemics that I've seen in my lifetime. That's on a national or a regional or whatever level. Now, me personally, I've just seen how everything that it looks like is against my year being immeasurably more. 
My stocks are losing value. My business is closed. Everything that I thought was going to happen by this time has not happened. But I'm just looking at my year, and I'm so glad that I serve a God that I walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm, I know you may be thinking that everything that God has for you is not coming to pass because of the current situation. But can I just remind you that the devil is a lie and his mama ain't got no sense to. Can I just let you know that everything that the Lord has for you is still going to come to pass. Everything that God has promised you is still yes and amen. And we're still declaring that this is our year of this more. We're still declaring that this is our year of being bigger, better, greater than we've ever seen or we've ever imagined. So can we keep declaring that God's going to God's going to open the windows of heaven for the outlet and you won't have all the roads in the Won't you put your hands together right there if you believe that it's going to be big. Hallelujah. Well, come on and put those hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, glad to be in the land of the living, glad to have breath in your body and activity in your limbs, I dare you right there in your living to open your mouth, throw your head back, and give God a good praise all over your house this morning. I dare you just to give somebody in your house a high five and tell them God is just good like that. Let us celebrate his name. Come on and bless him one more time. Hallelujah. Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Glad to share this moment with you this morning. We want to welcome you from all across the United States, from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the North to the South. We welcome you into the sanctuary of the Jackson Revival Center Church. Come on and just come in. Let us know that you are in the house this morning. That though we are not physically in the building, let us know that you're on the feed. Let us know where you're watching from and let this team know how much you appreciate uh, their work and their labor of love. We are so excited to be with you here again today. And I've got a word that I believe is going to shift your mindset. I've got a word that I believe is going to change your life. And so without further ado, if you will, I want you to go to Job chapter 9, 
verses 32 and 33. Job chapter 9, verses 32 and 33. And then after you find that, if you will, go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Hallelujah. We are so excited to have you coming. If you can't come to us, we are coming to you. We're so excited to be in your living room. So glad to be with you at work. So glad to be with you if you're taking a morning walk wherever you are. We're glad to share this moment with you. Uh, for those of you who will be joining us later, we welcome you as well. Uh, Job chapter 9, verse 32, and 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Job chapter 9 said, For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him, and that we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman betwixt us that may lay his hand upon us. Uh, now if you will go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. It says, For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and how you send your word to heal your people. Father, we thank you that at every moment you know where we are and you know what we need. Now, Father, I ask that you would minister to every person viewing by way of Facebook Live, viewing by way of YouTube. Father, even for those in the building, I pray that you would do something supernatural. Father, I thank you that today you would be the lifter of every bowed down head, the healer of every hurting heart. Now we ask that you would touch every ear that it might be a hearing ear. Touch every heart that it might be a receiving heart. Father, cause us to receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. Do what only you can do. Shift what only you can shift. Change whatever needs to be changed. Transform us, renew us, restore us, refresh us in Jesus' name we pray we ask that souls would be saved that minds would be transformed and father we'll be careful to give you the glory the honor and the praise everybody said amen amen and amen well we're in a particular place uh, with Job in this particular passage where he has gone through a whole lot of things. If you look back to Job chapter 1, it lets us know that uh, Job was a man of great prominence. He was a man of great prosperity, a man of prayer. And the Bible said that he feared God and eschewed evil. Uh, that he was a man whose reputation preceded him in the land of us. And he feared God. He was a perfect and an upright man and so there came a time around Job chapter 1 where the enemy came and posed a question in chapter 1 verse 9 and said does Job serve God for naught in other words Satan was asking uh, God if you uh, remove the hedge from Job would he still serve you like he serves you with all the blessings I mean you really blessed him and so there around verse 13 it said uh, there was a day when the sons and the daughters of Job were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house it said that there came a messenger from Job and said the oxen were plowing and the asses were feeding beside them and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. They have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while that servant was yet speaking, there came another one and said the fire of God has fallen from heaven 
driven and has consumed and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I alone am escaped to tell you and while that servant was speaking another came and said uh, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away yes they've slain the servants with the edge of the sword and I am alone have escaped to tell thee and while that one was yet speaking there came another one and said Job I hate to tell you but your sons and your daughters were eating at the home of your eldest son drinking wine and behold there came a wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and fell upon your sons and your daughters and they are dead and I alone have escaped to tell you that there was one bad report after another bad report and now here we are in a place where Job is having one of many arguments with his friends Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite that his friends have come to offer him comfort in a season of great distress they are there to cry with him and to sorrow with him to empathize him and for seven days they said nothing for seven days they were just there to share in his moment of sorrow but on the eighth day they ended up blaming Job and making accusations against him saying Job man you got to be lying Job you had to have done tell the truth man Ain't nobody would be suffering like you suffering if they didn't do something. Man, come on and fess up. There's got to be some kind of secret sin in your life. Job, you must have done something that you're not talking about. There, there's something that's got to be going on behind closed doors because God would not allow this to happen to you if you truly belong to God. They levied one false charge after another against him. They, they attacked his integrity. They uh, attacked his character. And they said, man, just be honest, because this kind of calamity don't happen without you having some great sin in your life. And in the midst of everything that he has lost, in the midst of those closest to him turning on him, Job is doing all that he can to maintain his integrity. And Job is saying stuff like, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job is saying stuff like, all of my appointed time. Will I wait until my change comes? Job is saying stuff like naked came I into the world and naked shall I return. Uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this the Bible let us know that Job fell down and he worshipped God. That he never charged God foolishly. That he never charged God falsely. But while he's suffering and trying to maintain his integrity, while he's suffering and really wondering for himself, where is God in the midst of this? Job is surrounded by folk trying to give him advice for situations they ain't never faced before. Man, let me tell you, there's nothing worse than folk trying to speak to you in a situation they ain't never been in. That you're drowning and they're telling you how wet the water is. Is, that you're looking for comfort and they're trying to give you advice let me let you know uh, one of the lessons I've learned in life is that there ain't nothing wrong with learning when to just be quiet sometimes you need to learn how to just be quiet it don't make you less spiritual it don't make you less saved that there's a time to speak there's a time to be quiet because if you ain't been through it it's hard to speak to it. And there are trials that you can face sometime in life that seem almost too hard to bear. Anybody ever been through a season of difficulty? 
I'm not talking about a season of difficulty that is the result of your own wrongdoing. I'm talking about going through something just because you were born and have breath in your body. Job said, man born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Job is in a place where he feels like he's alone, though there are folks around him who came to comfort him. In the midst of comforting, they turned. And now Job is in a place where he leaves the sickbed and takes us to the courtroom. That Job is in a place that now he's beginning to put God on trial. But he said there's a problem because God is not a man like I am. He said I can't argue with him man to man because we are unequal in this relationship. That I can't go up to where he is. But it seemed like he won't come down to explain himself to me. So Job said I need a daysman betwixt us. That he might lay his hand upon us both. Ah, uh, Joseph said, I need, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, Job said, I need a daysman to come and be betwixt us. That word daysman is an old English word that means umpire. Job said, I need an umpire. That word is Latin for a middleman. And in essence, Job was saying, I'm in a place in my life where I need an arbiter. I need somebody who can take his hand and take my hand and cause us to understand one another. It's, it's a forensic word that means if he were here in person, I might could understand him better. If he were here in person, I might could understand him somehow. Uh, somehow he might could understand understand me and we see that the musings of Job are the reverse of what David said in the eighth division of Psalm he said oh Lord our Lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth David said when I consider the heavens and the work of thy fingers when I consider the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him and the sun of man that thou might visit him for you have made us a little lower than the angels and you have crowned us with glory and honor now David said God you are so great how is it that you can be so great and deal with man who is so small that God is so great, yet he can communicate with man on our finite, frail level. But Job says, how is it that a man that is so small can catch up or argue with a God that is so great? That Job said, it feels like God is piling all this stuff on top of me. And he said, I don't understand it, that, that I'm trying to talk to him, that I'm trying to get answers, yet it seems there is no answer. That I'm reaching out to him for understanding, but there is no relenting in the things that I'm having to deal with. Job said the stress is more than I can bear. It was serious, y'all. He went so far as to say, I wish my birthday would be wiped off the calendar. Read it right there. He said, I wish that if I were going to be born, I would have been stillborn. He said, I wish that if I had known what life was going to bring, I should have died in my mother's womb. He said that if I knew I was going to encounter the calamities that I'm facing in this day, God should have just let me be born dead. He said, but he's too great. He's, he's too immense. I, I can't argue with him because I don't have all the facts. I'm not privy to all the information that he has. So uh, I'm in a place. That I need a daysman. Job said all that I could find him. 
I want to bring my case before him, but he is so big and I am so small. He is so wise and I lack so much knowledge that I want to call him to court. I want to put him on the witness stand. I, I want to ask some questions and get an understanding of what I'm going through and why I'm having to deal with what I'm having to deal with. And Job is asking God for answers in a moment where it seems that heaven has been shut and the doors have been closed. I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that. But when you're in a place like that and it seems like you cannot get answers, sometimes we become angry in our wondering, anger, angry in trying to deal with things we don't know how to deal with and somebody Watching today is in that place. I don't really want to talk this morning to the folk who got all the answers, who have it all figured out, and you just wish everybody would listen to you. This ain't your Sunday. But I'm talking to some people today who are facing some deep stuff. I'm talking to some people today who are thinking and having a hard time processing. And even for the spiritual folk, let me ask you a question. Do you really think that God don't know when you're upset with him? Or do you really think that God don't know when you got a problem with him? But let me let you know, God is not intimidated when we are mad with him. God is not upset when we get angry because we don't understand. There are some things that have happened in my life and in yours that God could have prevented. And yet he allowed them to continue as if he could do nothing about it. Uh, sometimes you find yourself asking questions. Why would God allow good folk to get sick and suffer a long time? And then no good folk who have no love for God, no time for God, no fear of God, never experience so much as a headache. Why did this one have to die? Why did your house get hit? Why is my child on drugs? Why was I laid off? Why did our state have a flood and then a global pandemic and then tornadoes and then fire why are all of these things happening we got a tornado on resurrection Sunday tornadoes on the Sunday following flooding this past week in the midst of a global pandemic I mean there are things that crowd in on us and sometimes we find ourselves asking God why Truth of the matter is God could answer if he wanted to. But sometimes he chooses to just sit back and let us figure out that our dependency is on his sufficiency. Uh, that there are some things that God allows us to go through because it produces in us things that otherwise would not have come through had you not gone through what you've been through. That God uses the trials of this life not to destroy you, but to develop you. That you can't shout right till you've been tried right. Ah, you don't really know how to give God glory until your back has been pushed all the way up against the wall. Baby, you don't know how to thank God until you've been down to your last time and God popped up and did a miracle right on time. Oh, he sent it to develop you, not to destroy you. It is in those moments that sometimes when we're trying to figure it out in our own intellect that, that we get angry and we get frustrated and we look right here in Job chapter 9. Job is anything but patient. Does anybody know what it is to be in a place in your life where you are anything but patient? Let me warn you people, don't pray for patience if you're not ready for trouble. 
or y'all don't want to talk to me this morning uh, but you can pray for patience if you want to but baby tread lightly while you pray that prayer you better walk softly while you pray right there because if you are praying for Job's patience you are going to have to endure Job's trials because with great patience comes great tribulation I know y'all don't like a white girl on a Sunday morning, but since I'm out here by myself, I may as well tell the truth and shame the devil. Because if you will be honest and if you would admit that you have ever experienced a moment of sadness, if you will be honest and admit that you have ever had moments of anger with God, For those who can be honest about it, this is your Sunday. If you've never been in a place where you've tried to figure out the ways of God, this ain't your sermon. But for those of you who know what it is to be in a tight place, and you've asked God to pull you out, but he left you right there, you're the person I want to talk to this morning. Because see, the real deal is, if God would have told me what he was going to send me through, it would have been all right. If he would have told me how long I was going to have to deal with what I'm having to deal with, then I probably would be all right. But God said, no, I want to work something in you. I want to work some stuff out of you. I dare you to look at somebody and say, if, in the words of Patty LaBelle, if only you knew. If only you knew the struggles. If only you knew the trials, if only you knew the pain, if only you knew the times that somebody was smiling when they wished that they were dying. Oh, if only you knew. But it was in the midst of the only. It's in the midst of the struggle. It's in the midst of the misunderstanding. It's in the midst of the pain. It's in the midst of walking by yourself that you begin to understand he's able to keep that that I've committed unto him. No matter what tomorrow brings, I can shout today because a real praiser and a real worshiper don't need conditions to be right, to bless a God who's right. When you're a real praiser and a real worshiper, it's not based on the money in your pocket. It's not based on the pat on your back. It's not based on your status, on your job. It's not based on the friends in your circle. Then Job said, I understand. I got to praise him in the down season, just like I praised him in the up season. Because Job said, I've come to understand in the day of blessing and in the day of adversity, I got to consider that God has appointed them both that every day has a work to do in your life. That I understand God has appointed one season as well as he appointed another season. But Job said, I found out in the midst of it all, God is able, he's able, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask. Or even think. Oh, somebody ought to bless his name right there. I mean, if he had just told me what he was up to, I think I could have handled it a little bit better. Job said if he would have just told me how long the trial was going to last, I would have known how to set myself. But he said, no, he let me be in that corner and he just squeezed everything out of me. <laughs> that he left me in it, though he was there in it with me. When I asked him to get me out, he left me right there. Job said, I wish I had an umpire. I, I wish I had a referee. I wish I had somebody who could step in between us and help us understand one another. I wish I had a daysman 
who could put the hand of God in my hand and put my hand in the hand of God and help us understand one another that it was a double consciousness that Job was said I- I'm dealing with a God that I can't understand but Job said I- I- I'm-, I'm troubled because I'm dealing with a God also that I don't think understands me mm. Job said, I, I'm suffering and I don't understand because he is so big and I am so small. Job said, I, I need a referee. I, I need somebody who can go between. That, that I need somebody who can go where he is. And come talk to me about what he's saying from where he is. I need somebody who can take what I say and what I feel and and take it back to him. Uh, I I need help dealing with this situation. It's just like uh, in John when Jesus was talking to Nathaniel. Nathaniel was up under a tree and Jesus said, Nathaniel, when you were up under the tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel was all excited and Jesus said, well, if you think that's something, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. And see, it's, it's a reference to uh, when uh, Jacob was running from Esau. He had stolen his birthright and Jacob fell asleep. And in the midst of his sleep, uh, he began to see something. He was all out there by himself, running for his life. And he started dreaming a dream. And he saw a ladder reaching up into heaven. And the ladder reaching up into heaven was also touching down in the earth. And on that ladder there were angels that were ascending and descending. Oh, somebody better help me right here. That Jesus said, I am that ladder. I'm the ladder that causes heaven to connect with earth. I am your point of contact, Joe. Job was saying I need a window into heaven that would allow me to see what he's doing and then come back down and tell me what he said I need a referee I need an umpire I need a daysman I need a middleman I need an intercessor I need a mediator that was Job's request And we move from the dark shadows of the Old Testament to the bright light of the New Testament because Job's request came. And some 1,600 years later, oh, you think you've been waiting a long time, but some 1,600 years later, God gives a reply to Job's request. If you look in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, some 1,668 years later, God sends a response to Job's request. He said, uh, Job, you said you need a mediator. You said you need a go-between. You said you needed a communicator. Uh, You said you need somebody from heaven to come down to the earth and be an intermediary. You need somebody uh, who can tell you what you need to hear. You need a daysman. You need a middleman. Well, I got one for you. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says, For there is one God. There is one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Job said, I need a daysman. I need a mediator. Paul said there's one God, one mediator, and his name is Christ Jesus. You say, well, pastor, what is a mediator? So I can know if I might need one too. A mediator is one who takes two warring factions and coalesces.
this is the answer to both parties so that both arguments can be satisfied and they walk away no longer enemies but friends I said a mediator takes two warring factions and brings them together in community but you say how can a sinful man be brought into a relationship with a holy God somebody got to become sin and they have to become sin in the flesh but at the same time as they become sin in the flesh they've also got to remain sinless sinful man could communicate with a holy God but needed a man in flesh to become sin but still remain sinless Abraham couldn't do it because he lied and said Sarah was his sister when in all truth she was his wife Noah couldn't do it because on the eve of reconstruction he got drunk and naked in front of his own children Jacob couldn't do it because he stole his brother's birthright and tricked him out of his blessing David couldn't do it because David took another man's wife and had that very man killed on the battlefield Moses couldn't do it because instead of speaking to the rock he struck the rock and missed out on the promised land Aaron couldn't do it because he was too weak to hold up the banner in Moses stead there had to be a man in the flesh who could bear sin but remain sinless that's why Job said I need a redeemer I need a mediator that's why I said I need somebody who can meet the requirements of justification he's the intellect of deity becoming the element of incarnation residing in human flesh that God lowered himself down into a human body and becomes everything that Job has been looking for I want to let you know whatever you've been looking for just showed up in the man Christ Jesus oh he had to become our sin take our sin upon him so he could mediate between heaven and earth you got to understand God could never have come down in all of his glory because we never would have been able to get close enough to understand just how much he really loved us God could never come down in all the fullness of his resplendent power because we would never be able to tolerate the essence of his glory so God had to sheathe his power in human skin in flesh in something that we could touch in something that we could talk to yet something that could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities no human personality could do it no divine personality could do it so the personality had to become human and divine oh y'all better hear me this one i'm not talking about 50% human and 50% divine. I'm talking about 100% human and 100% divine all at the same time. That is the essence of our Christianity that Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient to what he did like, to what he didn't like, to what he did understand, to what he didn't understand, became obedient, died on the cross for my sin and your sin at a time we were not even studying him. And yet he remained sinless in the midst of it all. Job said, I need a mediator. I need a daysman. I need somebody who can make God understandable. 
I need somebody who, who can make God comprehensible. It'd be like you and I trying to communicate with an ant on the ground. <laughs> but you will never be able to make that kind of connection between you and an ant on the ground. Because you are so big and the ant is so small. That the only way as a man that you could understand the ant is that you would have to become an ant. Y'all don't want to go with me. You'll say, but pastor, that, that would be impossible. Right. Because with man, that is impossible. But with God. Well, Y'all don't get it. I just missed somebody. Because with God, all things are possible. Because the only way that God could save us is that God become one of us. I know that some, po some people, you're so holy, you don't need a Savior. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Mm -hmm. but, but, but let me speak to somebody. Who understands that if God ever, not, not remove the hedge, but if God ever even lowered the hedge. Uh -uh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. We would all be in a mess. If everything that were true about every person in this building, if everything that were true about you watching by way of social media. Baby, we would all be scattering like roaches. Don't let the skirts and the suits and the ties and the dresses fool you. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Like Job, we needed a redeemer. Like Job, we needed a mediator. Therefore, you can't allow other people's impression of you dictate how you pursue what you need. Y'all remember the Syrophoenician woman? She came after Jesus, found Jesus, and said, Jesus, my daughter is at home vexed with a devil. Jesus said, it is not meat for me to take uh, the children's bread and give it to the dogs. Now, the average person, if Jesus had said that to them, they would have been offended. They would have left the church. But this woman said, look, yes, Lord, you are right. She said, I'm not even going to argue with you on that. Because I am so desperate that I refuse to argue with the one who has what I need. What I need, Jesus, is so urgent. What I need, Jesus, is so critical. I don't have time for theological debates. Yes, Lord, it would be crazy for you to take the bread that belongs to the children off of the table and give it to the dogs. But, Master, woof, woof, but, Master, even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. Oh, Lord. If you could just let some crumbs fall from your table, I don't care what the answer is. I just need to receive something from you. Ah, oh, you might be in the house right now with somebody who thinks they're holier than God himself. You might be with somebody who hadn't smiled all morning long, ain't opened their mouth not one time, didn't sing during worship, didn't pray during prayer, didn't say amen when we joined together, hadn't lifted a hand, no response to the scripture read, because in their mind, that's for all of us. They don't feel they need all that. Because, I mean, after all, they ain't out in the street no more. At uh, least I don't do drugs. At least I'm not a prostitute. Yeah, because that's what God kept you from. But understand, you're not where you are because you have been so righteous. It's that God is so full of mercy 
that God just looked over your fault and met all your needs. God looked beyond your foolishness and that, that right there ought to be reason enough to give God praise. That right there ought to be reason enough to give God glory. That ought to be reason enough for you to say, if don't nobody else praise him, I'm going to praise him. Job said, I need a mediator. I need a middleman. I need an umpire. I need a daysman. And the scripture says there's one God, one daysman, one redeemer, one mediator, one umpire, one referee between God and man. That man is Christ Jesus. Before I let you go, I want you to see one more thing. In verse 6, Jesus said, he gave himself a ransom for all. This is the first and only time that word is used in the New Testament. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus said he gave his life as a ransom for many. But that's not the same word that's used in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 6. Because in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 6, when he uses the word ransom, it's a word that has a double connotation. It's the Greek word antilotron. It means not only does the sinner have to be atoned for, but somebody got to take the sinner's place. That the door had been shut. There was no way for me to get to the tree of life. That's one half of the ransom. But the full payment got to be made. So that the door that was shut can be open once again. Because back in the garden, God shut the door. Not only did he shut it, but he put an angel there. He put an angel there with a flaming sword. That if anybody tried to come any other way, they would be incinerated. So now, I need somebody who can open the door. I need somebody who can not only open the door, but I need somebody who will let me in. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I'm going all the way in. I'm going all the way in. Cause you gotta understand, there's a difference in opening a door and walking in. Oh yeah, there's a difference in opening a door and going in. So you gotta have somebody to open the door. You gotta have somebody who can escort you in order for you to legally get in. I'm gonna close with this. When I was a little girl on Sunday morning, I used to walk into my daddy's office because in my daddy's office there was a bowl of peppermint and so right before service I would walk in daddy's office I would get me a hand of peppermint and when I got out the door I would share the peppermint with my friends when I got out the door I would share what he gave me with them that it was through me that they had access to some of my father's blessings. And there were some Sundays we would be walking past the door and they would say, aren't you going to stop and get some peppermint? Somebody going to catch me in a minute. Because when I went in, they would stay outside the door. I would come in and get all the candy that I wanted because that was my daddy. That was my daddy's office. That was my daddy's jurisdiction. That's where my daddy had authority. Oh, but one day they said, aren't you going to go in? And I said, you know what? I'm tired of going on your behalf. I walked in daddy's office. And I said, y'all, come on in. I can invite you in. Because this is my daddy's office. And my daddy said, what 
belongs to him belongs to me. Y'all come on in. One Friday on a blood salt cross, Jesus said, y'all come on in. There was somebody who wanted to get saved. There was somebody who needed access. And Jesus said, y'all come on in. Come on in. Cause I got access. And I will share my access with you. Job was saying, I need somebody who can access heaven from down on earth. And Jesus responded, I'll send you a mediator. I'll send you a middleman. I'll send you a redeemer. And he'll give you access. And because you got access, you got access not only to the blessing. You had the blessing before. But now you got access. Access to healing. Access to comfort. Access to answers. Access to solutions. Access to restoration. I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have devoured. I'll give you double for your trouble. I don't know about you, but I'm still saying this is my year of beyond. This is my year that though it looks like I've lost my sheep, though it looks like I've lost my oxen, Though it looks like I've lost my cattle. Though it looks like I've lost my retirement. Though it looks like I've lost my sons. Lost my daughters. I believe that before it's all over. Because I've got a daysman. God's going to give me double for my trouble. God said whatever you had in mind. It's going to be bigger than that. Whatever you thought it was going to be, it's going to be better than that. You're not coming out of this broke, busted, and disgusted. You're coming out united. You're coming out stronger. You're coming out wiser. You're coming out wealthier. I dare you to say, I need a middleman. I need a middleman. His name is Jesus his name is Jesus. My way out of nowhere. My bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. Friend for the friendless. The one who holds me late in the midnight hour. Friend who sticks closer than a brother. The one who wipes tears from my eye. My healer, my protector, my director, my comfort, my guide, my help in the time of trouble. My refuge when I'm weary. My sufficiency when everything else is gone. He's my middleman. I dare you to say I need a middleman. He's my help. I will look to the hills from which cometh my help, my help comes from my mediator, my redeemer, my restorer. Ah. He's my help, my rock in a weary land, shelter in the time of storm, bridge over troubled water. My door open, my way maker, my burden bearer, my heavy load shelter, the lifter of my head, the keeper of my heart, my realm in the bush. What do you know about Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. I dare you to 
to take 15 seconds and give God a praise. Job was covered with boils, oozing pus from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Job said, don't worry about how I look right now, because I know that my Redeemer lives. And before it's all over, let me tell you, there may be somebody watching today by way of Facebook Live, by way of YouTube, you may be on our social media page. And you're saying, Pastor, I can identify with Job. You're preaching my story. I was affected by the flood, affected by COVID-19, affected by tornadoes, affected by the next round of storms, affected by the straight line wind, affected by this, affected by the layoff, affected by financial decline, affected by the crash of the stock market, affected by the stress and the pressure. And you're saying, I've been, I've been feeling like I needed a redeemer. I need an umpire. I need somebody who can lay their hands out and call me safe. When life wanted to call me out, I need somebody who can stand over me and declare me safe. Jesus said, I am your umpire. I am your referee. I am your middleman, your mediator. I'm the one who came to bring peace. When you were enemies of God, I came to restore peace that you might be called a friend of God. If that's you today and you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, I'm going to ask you to pray with me as I pray with you. Those of you who are watching today by way of Facebook Live, by way of YouTube, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. And just say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now. Father, I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I thank you for loving me so much that you look beyond my faults and met and supplied every one of my needs. I thank you for loving me so much 
that you sent your only son. Father, who shed his blood and died on the cross to pay for all of my sins, past, present, and future. Now, Father, I repent. And I ask that the blood of Jesus be placed upon the doorpost of my life. I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and use me for your glory from this day forward. Now, Father, I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart that because of the blood of Jesus I am saved hallelujah if you prayed that prayer let me let you know there ought to be a rejoicing right now there's a rejoicing in heaven there's a rejoicing in this house there's a rejoicing in my heart there's a rejoicing in the heart of every believer and I'm going to push it a step further for those of you who say, I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, but I don't have a pastor. I don't have a church home. If you want a church home, you need me to be your pastor. You want this church to be your family. I want you to just acknowledge it right there on that feed. Say, I want to become a member of Jackson Revival Center Church. I want to be under the covering of this anointing. I want to be under the tutelage of this pastor. I want to grow in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I want my gifts to be nurtured. I want to grow in the fear of God. I want to grow in knowing how to study the word. If that is you, I want you to just let us know. We're going to come as you come in in the feed we've got people who are ready to respond to you we've got prayer warriors we've got people who are worshiping online with you ready to respond and so I'm going to pray with you now for those of you who want to become a member I'm going to pray with you now Heavenly Father we thank you Father I thank you for what you showed me even in the beginning of this year how you were sending people from the north the south the east and the west I thank you even this week for how you've reminded me we would always have everything we need right when we need it. Father, I thank you for how you are so faithful to meet and supply every need. I thank you for the wonderful team of people you have supplied to the vision. And now, Father, we thank you for those who are coming to be a part. We don't take their coming lightly. We thank you that even now they're coming from the north, the south, the east and west. They're coming from other states. They're coming from other nations. And now, Father, we pray that this would be one of the best decisions that they've ever made. That they would be blessed in their coming in and blessed in their going out. Blessed when they're at work. Blessed when they're at play. Father, we ask that you would uh, crown their efforts with great success. Bless the works of their minds and the bless the works of their hands. Let them be faithful in their attendance. Faithful to give of the tithe and offering and faithful to give of the gifts and the talents that you've placed on the inside of them. Father, it is our covenant with them and our covenant with you, our covenant with the body of Christ that we will study to show ourselves approved. That we will study that we might rightly divide the word of truth. That they may receive that word and grow thereby. Father, we will marry their young and bury their old. We will pray for them, love them, comfort them, check on them, bless them. And now, Father, we ask that together you would enable us to advance your kingdom all throughout the earth. In Jesus' name. Now we receive them as the newest members of our Jackson Revival Center Church family. Father, I bless right now every person who is dealing with sickness in their body. Father, I bless those who need a miracle from you right now. Father, we thank you that there is no distance in prayer. Father, for every person right now who is dealing with any sickness, any symptom, any dis-ease within their bodies. We thank you that healing is the children's bread. We ask that right now your healing virtue would flow from the top of every head to the soles of every foot. 
Father, we ask that every symptom would subside, that every fever would be broken, that every sore throat would be made whole, that every body ache would have to surrender to the power in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that even now people are beginning to breathe on their own, that they're coming off of ventilators. Father, I thank you right now that hearts are being regulated, that pulmonary systems are being healed, that sugar is being regulated. I thank you that migraines are being broken, that sinuses are being dried up. Father, that every bit of discomfort right now by your power, Every person by the sound of my voice be healed in the name of Jesus. Every person that has been tormented by demonic spirits be delivered right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that no weapon formed against the body of Christ shall be able to prosper. And I thank you that everything that the enemy has meant for evil, God is turning it and working together for good. I thank you for marriages that are being reconciled. I thank you for minds that are being restored right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for hearts that are being set at ease. Touch the children. Touch the teenagers. Touch the adolescents. Touch the young adults. Touch the elderly. Touch each one name by name, face by face, situation by situation. In the name of Jesus we pray. Everybody said it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. We are so glad that we've had this opportunity to share this moment with you. I'm going to ask you if you are at home and there are people with you that you would run and grab them. Speak this over them. Wherever you are, if you're on your job, if you're in your car, if someone is riding with you, wherever you are, I want you to just say, neighbor, I pray the blessings of the Lord rest upon you everything and everyone connected to you may the spirit of the living god keep your heart your mind and your body in perfect peace in jesus name now declare with me because it won't be long i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord you are dismissed Love somebody in your house. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. Thank you so much for joining us for worship here at Jackson Revival Center. We hope you had an awesome experience and we look forward to seeing you right here. If you made the decision during this stream to dedicate or rededicate your life to Jesus, we want to hear about it. So head on over to myjrc.info forward slash decision to complete the form and one of our team members will reach out to you to let you know the next steps. Finally, before we go, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Jackson Revival Center to stay current on news and announcements as we navigate the next few weeks. See you soon.